Hi, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. We are here with our sneak APJ live stream for The Big Fix, where we are trying to fix 200,000 vulnerabilities in the open source projects. And um, thanks to all the wonderful people who have been fixing it, and we are almost reaching 100,000 in just one and a half week. That's a tremendous number. And today I have been joined at this stream uh, a very wonderful person and a person who's been contributing to the open source for many, many years. And uh, let me just welcome Steve Springett. Hi, Steve. Hey, Banana. How are you? I am good. Thank you so much for agreeing to be part of the stream. Today, we're going to be talking about and touching points around OWASP Cyclone DX, which is a software bill of material. And that's something which needs the highlight. And I'm sure most of you would know it, but today we're going to go deep dive into it what Cyclone DX is and uh, how it can help organization, who can pick up, what are the different formats which are there, what it is all about, like all the nitty gritties. Thank you so much. Thank you. So uh, yes, Cyclone DX is a bill of materials standard. Um, it is uh, used by an estimated 100,000 organizations. And uh, as of some recent statistics, I, I know that it's uh, that's what, over 300 million components are represented in Cyclone DX every single month. Uh, those are just the ones we know about. So it's uh, the the explosion of the adoption has been um, uh, has been very humbling. Um, but it also introduces some challenges. Um, you know, we're an open source project, and uh, you know the uh, contributions are, are are critical for uh, for any open source project. So um, the, I guess the first thing I, I will actually you know, show is, uh, and one of the most common questions that we get is, how do we get involved? We operate entirely in the open. Uh, everything is on GitHub. Um, the, in fact, the, um, we have our own GitHub organization um, in, uh, in, in, in GitHub. And uh, we've got in excess of, looks like 60 repositories right now. The um, specification is, well, the, spe the, the standard itself in both uh, uh, JSON and XML formats, as well as, um, as, well as Protobuf. Um, but we have all kinds of other repositories as well for all the different implementations. We've got Java and Gradle and various libraries, and we've got NPM and PNPM and Yarn and and Webpack and all these other things that um, all these other implementations um, that also have their own repositories. So in terms of finding and fixing things, um, there's not a shortage of repositories to go through. <laughs> Software is just one of the things that that it can be that, that can be represented in the in the standard, right? Uh, if we go to the capabilities page, um, all the talk, especially we around the executive order, is around SBOM or software bill of materials, and um, Cyclone DX was built from the ground up to be a bill of materials format, and I think we do this pretty well. Um, so we have complete inventory of all of the components and their dependency relationships and um, all kinds of other relationships and other data about that software. But we also realize that modern software hasn't lived in a bubble in two decades, right? Software typically relies on services. Maybe your application relies on pulling the weather or stock quotes, or maybe it relies upon sensors that operate in its environment. Right, it relies on some kind of external input, and uh, being able to capture those services is equally important uh, in terms of inventory. If you don't know what you have, you can't protect it. But with all this transparency, with SBOM and all these other things, uh, we need a way to describe what vulnerabilities are in these things, uh, in both known vulnerabilities and unknown vulnerabilities. And uh, Cyclone DX has the has uh, support for both VEX and VDR. And uh, real briefly, VEX's ability to describe, hey, this thing is not affected by X. Uh, maybe uh, I'll use Log4j because it's the gift that keeps, keeps on giving. So um, uh, I'm not affected by Log4j because I don't have any Java or Log4j in my environment. 
that would be a perfectly valid uh, VEX, right? Uh, to say you're not, you are not affected by something. VEX is basically an anti-security, uh, it's a negative security advisory. Uh, VDR is basically the opposite of that. It is an assertion of, hey, I've got this software or I've got this service and these are the vulnerabilities that it has, right? So it's, uh, it's more of a positive um, way to say, hey, these are the, these are the vulnerabilities that affect this, this component or this product. This is, this is kind of what the core of Cyclone DX is, right? It's villain material. It's, it's based around a lot of security use cases. A lot of folks talk about security and the, the, the most common analogy is, is really about that. Hey, does this component have known vulnerabilities, but there's dozens and dozens of security use cases that that Cyclone DX supports outside of just does this component have known vulnerabilities so we have a use cases section on the Cyclone DX website that on the right hand side it has some use cases inventory being the most you know uh, obvious thing because you can't protect what you don't know but uh, again going back to a security use case and open source being the ultimate supply chain uh, being able to represent pedigree, the DNA of, of changes that have been made to an otherwise, uh, you know, vulnerable component, for example. Say, for example, I'm using a, you know, uh, a vulnerable version of, of Log4j, and maybe it's that version 1.x, right? Maybe I'm not using Log4j 2, but maybe I'm stuck for whatever reason on log4j 1.x and I can't upgrade it, right? Because all kinds of other downstream things would break. Well, responsible organizations are gonna backport what those security fixes are and and be able to describe, um, hey, these are, this is this component right here. This is what I, this is my new component. This is what I actually derive from this is my commits that I've made to this component. These are the people who committed it. These are the patches. And you can see that, um, uh, right, let's see, where is it right here? So this one right here, it's a backport and I can describe the diff in here. And this is actually what it resolves. So I'm describing in my bill of material format. Yes, I'm using this vulnerable component. And no, customer, I'm not actually impacted by this because these are the changes that I've made. These are the backports that I made. This is why I made these backports. And you're not actually impacted by this vulnerability. Cyclone DX is interesting in that all these things are optional. So I can have a, an SBOM that has only my components and optionally my services. I can have a VEX or VDR that only has vulnerabilities and no other information, right? Um, and that way it allows you to decouple these different areas of concern so that um, your vulnerabilities isn't necessarily mixed up with your inventory, right? Some SCA tools do this um, and it's good for some point in time uh, use cases, but for the most part, SBOMs and vulnerability information should completely be separate from one another. And, um, and Cyclone DX actually allows you to do that. We have this thing called bomb link, which allows us to represent the identity of a, a, a bill of material, as well as any other component within that bill of material. From a developer's perspective, uh, one of the things that we've tried to really concentrate on is ease of adoption. Ease of adoption is really important to Cyclone. Cyclone is not the perfect data model, right? That's not what we set out to do. What we set out to do was have something that was highly automatable um, and that was easy to both understand and easy to implement. We have this thing called the Tool Center um, that allows you to um, find different tools. It looks like we have 170 tools as of today that are, that are known. There's, there's a lot more tools that we, that we don't know about, but these are, these are the ones that we at least know about. And there's 170 of them as of now. Um, but you can, um, um, you know, filter based on these, these different aspects. Um, but if you're wanting to find like a native Maven plugin or, um, a Gradle plugin or NPM or PMPM or yarn or something like that, 
uh, you can absolutely find the native build uh, plugins. You can also find tools that are more generic, right? They run outside of the build, uh, but actually support all different kinds of build systems. Uh, and there's use cases for being able to do both of these things. Uh, the integration with the build itself typically yields the more accurate results, but it takes a little bit more work, especially if you have tens of thousands of builds in your environment, right? The other part of the simplicity thing was really about being able to uh, look from a developer's perspective, read, understand, and implement the standard in as little time as humanly possible. And I think we've done a really good job at that. Um, Cyclone DX, again, it's not designed to be the perfect model. It's designed to be highly automatable and really easy to understand and pick up and adopt. Um, basically every year uh, in Q1, sometimes Q2, but we try to hit Q1, uh, we've been releasing uh, a new version of the spec. We are currently working on version 1.5. All the great things that um, Cyclone DX offers today is phenomenal. Uh, again, the adoption is incredible, uh, but we're not done. There's still a lot of things that no bill of material format can actually represent today. Uh, the other thing that's coming in 1.5 that I'm really excited about is uh, support for low code application platforms. Uh, so low code or no code, is uh, is actually one of the number one areas uh, growth areas in enterprise IT. The the idea behind low code is you have optionally a little bit of code and maybe a few other things, and voila, you you have your own application. And in some organizations, some organizations have tens of thousands of these low code apps running on um, these different platforms. Right, my employer is 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 one of these platforms but there are dozens and dozens of, of low code platforms out there the other thing in one five that we're really excited about is support for formulation and that's ticket 31 here this is the idea that we're going to describe how something was made right how was a piece of software made how was a piece of hardware made um how was a service created and deployed so these types of things we are are looking for uh, inclusion in uh, in one five. We're also working simultaneously, I might add, on one six. And one six is really about cryptographic bill of material, and this is this is a way for us to be transparent about the algorithms that are in use and information about those algorithms so that we know what our potential risk is in a post-quantum reality. We're working on a few other things past that. So <laughs> yes, we're, we're, we're also planning one seven. So, but wait, there's more. Um, so if you're interested in any of that, um, you know, get involved and, and ping us on, uh, on Slack. So with that, uh, I'm gonna, I've been talking for a really long time. <laughs> So, Vandana, is uh, is there anything that you want me to f you you have questions on the community thinks would be uh, would be valuable to talk about? No, I think this is totally amazing. Thank you so much for sharing the wonderful insights. It was totally incredible. I am sure people are going to reach out to you, support it, and organization can pick it up because when we talk about. Um, the executive order from white house that also talk about that we need to have software bill of materials and it rightly fits into that and it also complements the software development framework ssdf as well so i'm sure uh, we all need to use it i am using it in my research and i'm sure it is very 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 helpful thank you so much very good thanks for the invite bandana thanks for sneak for putting on this event um if you find vulnerabilities this is about fixing and finding vulnerabilities right I will say the majority of, not, not all, but the majority of contributions to Cyclone DX are in fact from security people. But in fact, we are people. We do make mistakes. <laughs> and uh, even, our, even our AI overlords make mistakes. <laughs> but uh, if you do find things uh, in any of the Cyclone DX repositories, uh, we do have a, um, a security MD so uh, please reach please use that please responsibly disclose and we will be um, uh, responsive uh, to anything that you find so so thank you if in fact uh, you, you do find it fingers crossed
Absolutely, absolutely. I am sure after this session, a lot of people would start uh, checking out OVAS uh, Cycle Loan DX, and um, I am sure there's so much we have to learn from you because you've been contributing to so many things. And thanks for joining me today. It was very, absolutely. very wonderful to have you. Thanks so much. Cheers. Thank you so much. Yeah, it was wonderful, wonderful to have you. Looking forward to seeing you again. <laughs> you too. <laughs> Thank you.